So I call my wife at work, and I say, honey, I just bought a jet engine. And she's like, you know, what are you doing? You're not a rocket scientist. And I said, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. You have to be a jet scientist. And honestly, I'm not a jet scientist either. But I am a mad scientist. You guys have seen what I've done here before. Look, there's not a whole lot of moving parts on this. What is the worst thing that go wrong? Maybe a piece will go flying off. All right, no problem. I'll figure it out. That's what I do. Uh, yeah, that for soft start, we're not going to have anything that's working. Okay, thanks a lot. Sorry about that, Louis. Hey, not a problem. Right. Bye now. No, that's good. Thanks very much. All right. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Now, some guys are funny. I don't think we're going to be able to help you out with your jet engine. <laughs> we deal with car stuff. What's the difference? You know? Seriously. A couple thousand horsepower? difference? Maybe that's about it. If something goes wrong, we're looking at maybe a fire. No problem. Got it covered. Fireman. Um, if something lets go inside of here, just don't stand beside it or behind it. Kind of makes sense. You know, I've seen V8s. I've seen engines blow pretty good, blow chunks of metal and crankshafts at the back. I'm not too worried about this. I think it'll give me warning if something really bad is going to happen. But right now, you know what, I got to make sure that this thing is actually going to go. So I found out, a cool guy I found on uh, YouTube, Ben is his name, uh, Ben Sly. He told me how the igniter box works on this, because there's three little prongs here. And I don't have the military connection that hooks up to that. Right? Okay. So he told me where, and I marked on here with a little marker where I have to hook things up. The way this works, it doesn't have like a glow plug like you'd see in a diesel. It actually has uh, igniters, which are like spark plugs. So what you need to do is you need to get this engine spooling up, then you need to advance the igniters or turn on the igniters. There's one on either side of the engine. Once it, that happens, you need to open up your fuel cutoff, allow fuel to go into it, and then that'll more or less bring you to an idle. And then you have your throttle in your, accel in your acceleration pump or your pump. So the first thing I want to do, I want to make sure I got a spark on this baby. Now, this, everything on this is 24 volts, but I can still use 12 volts and get away with it. This has a capacitor. I expect probably two capacitors in here for these sparkers. You know, it'll, drain, it'll bring up the power and then it'll release it. So let's see if we get a spark on here. So three is ground. I got my little alligator clips here. Uh, number one is one of the sides. Oops, I can't see one. There we go. There we go. Now this can't be too hard. I'll put on my put on my glasses. Get my trusty Canadian tire booster cables. All right, here we go. So if this works, you should hear a clicking noise. I like it, sounds violent, that's what I like. That's awesome. All right, so let's move it to the other side here now. So two, one and two, uh, three is ground. Very good, and all I'll have to do is just wire these up. I'm working on a wiring panel or gauge cluster for it. Just to have everything sort of neat and tidy. I've got an oil pressure gauge. I've got an EGT, ex exhaust gas temperature. You gotta have that or you'll melt the motor down. This, you know, this thing doesn't really run any hotter than what you would think uh, at the back where the business end is more or less. You're, you know, if you exceed 700 degrees Celsius for an extended period of time, a few seconds, you're probably gonna really start to melt your engine down. But probably at cruise, I don't know, maybe five, 600, probably mid 500s. That's about it. Okay, let's see if this other one goes. Woo! That sounded good. Did that sound like the other side too? Did this one sound like this side? Or was it this side? It was the far side. Interesting. No? Well, I'd be happy if I got one side going. <laughs> okay, now for the fun part. 
Okay, so now all we're gonna do is, we're gonna try spooling this up just on the starter. Just wanna see what happens. But the way you have to do it, you gotta put 12 volts into it first and then add 24 volts. So you're more or less soft starting it and then you're putting the full power to the starter motor. If you just drive 28 volts right to that starter motor off the bat, it's a little hard on it. You know, the uh, turbine inside here is about the size of this casing and it's, there's a lot of torque, you know, there's gonna be a lot of uh, load on that motor and we don't wanna do that. So Jamie here, we came up uh, with our little method of starting it on 12 volts with, the, with one battery and then I kick it over with a switch right here to our 24 volts. And uh, she ramps up pretty good, Martha. So you're going to this one. Yeah. Okay, you ready? I don't have it on yet. Oh my God, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, okay, just jammer. Okay, five, four, three, two, one, now. Gotta love that bearing noise. <laughs> well, you know what, it's still turning. It's not a bad thing. But come look at this. That there looks like a bird or a mouse nest. <laughs> I think there is a mouse living in the back of this thing. What's it look like in here, Jamie? I think there's only one way to get that mouse nest out. Burn it. Blast it. Yep, I think she's ready to start. But we can't do it in here. Bought all the metal, I'm gonna build a uh, support frame for it, support structure, because you know what? I don't think it's a good idea to start it in here with uh, the wall and this uh, current setup with our tie down straps for our sleds. So we're gonna build a rack for it today. Work at a better starting system because uh, guys uh, counting things down and throwing cables around. Maybe not a good idea. I am not, obviously I do not know very much if anything about switching and relays and solenoids and whatnot. So if anybody has a good idea or if this is your specialty, actually, why don't you do this? Why don't you contact me through Facebook or on my um, YouTube through my comment section or a private message. Tell me what you think you'd do for this. Now, what I need to do is I need four batteries. I've got them already right now. Four batteries. I need to produce 28 volts, but I have to start off on 12 volts first. 12 volts for about three or four seconds, and then 28 volts. How do I do that? Maybe about a thousand cold cranking amps going through it. And then I need to turn on my igniters. And that's about it. I'm gonna have a fuel pump, but I'm gonna use uh, an air actuated fuel pump. So we're gonna have a compressed a container with my jet fuel in it or my kerosene. And we're gonna actually bring it up to about 15 PSI inside the tank and that way it's gonna flow enough into that, uh, the intake for the fuel inlet here. I'll show you that. It's a little bit bigger than, or about the same size of a garden as a garden hose. So that's where it's gotta go in. That's my fuel inlet. So I can get pumps that supply 15 PSI. That's the max PSI that you need to get into there but they don't flow the right amount of gallonage or the right gallons per minute or liters per minute. So we're just gonna compress our tank, 15 pounds. We'll constantly get as much as we need. And that's it. Now, let's build that frame, Jamie. That sounded good though, come on. That one was starting to hum up there, right? <laughs> okay, let's get her done.
quarter inch wall. Should hold. 